Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today in this module we shall be talking about the various types of database models that are used in GIS. As you all know, GIS stands for Geographic Information System. We have studied about the components and the concept of GIS in previous modules where we came to know that GIS includes some components such as uh, methods, people that is the users, the hardware components and the software components. So what this GIS does is it is a computer based system that is stored for querying, analyzing, storing, capturing and performing operations on any set of data or any object or a place or a phenomena that is referenced with respect to the earth. This means that that object or a place or a phenomena will have certain geographical coordinates so that we can locate these places on earth and accordingly we can simulate it in a GIS environment. So there are certain data models that we have studied previously which is vector data model based on point, line and polygon and raster data model that stands for uh, data which is made up of grids or picture elements that we call as pixels of cells. So what we are going to do in this module is we will study the three types of database models that is network database model, relational database model and hierarchical database models. So we will get an, we will try to get an overview of all these models uh, so that uh, they can be applied in GIS domain. So let's begin with these modules. As you all know, GIS is a very powerful tool for a range of applications across the disciplines. The capacity of GIS to store, retrieve, analyze and model the information, especially the spatial information comes from its database management system. The database management system which we call as DBMS of GIS system stores and retrieves the spatial and non-spatial information which we call as attribute data and it optimizes these processes for the users. It can also be an embedded package within the system which allows the users to set up, use and maintain the database. It offers a useful set of functions and capacity to store terabyte information. DBMS enables the GIS system to extract the information based on certain query and also use data model which defines the data structures. See there are many useful properties of any database management system which can be summarized as given below. For example, the first one is storage and retrieval. Any database management system helps us in storing the data which can be both spatial and non-spatial and retrieving the same data while performing the operations. The second is data integrity. The GIS database management system helps us in uh, maintaining the integrity of the data. The third one is conditional based query. That means if we have certain conditions. For example, you have to select certain places which are located within a buffer of an area or how far is the place from a given point. For that conditional based query also database management system is very important. The next one is data backup and recovery. So if you have to recover some data after even after the analysis has been performed, the database management system comes to use. And the last one is data redundancy. Any database management system helps us in reducing the redundancy of a data by uh, managing the duplicates or triplicates which might be present in a data. So these above mentioned properties of database are achieved by means of database models. The relevant database models in GIS domain are tabular data model, relational database model, network database model, hierarchical database model, 
and object oriented database model. So in this module we shall be focusing on the relational data model, network database model and hierarchical database model. The rest would come in the next module. So coming to the first one relational database model, the term relational database was defined and coined by Edgar Codd at IBM Alma Den Research Center in 1970. This relational database model relies upon common attributes within the data set. It utilizes the common attribute to cluster the data set. Most of the GIS tables are stored using relational data model. This relation is expressed in terms of tuples based on common attribute and a table that is composed of rows and columns. Relational DBMS is based on a set of mathematical principles also called as relational algebra. This provides specific set rules which de design the database models. So this relational algebra that we are talking about, it lays down certain rules such as the table cannot duplicate the other row data in any tuple. The second is the columns can be used for primary search key. The third is single column or even multiple columns. The last is that the primary key cannot be left blank to avoid any duplication. So the users can match the data from one table to another table by relational join. The primary key that is the first column in any database is used to match the data with foreign key that is the second column. Going further, second column can act as first column and next column can act as foreign key to match the data which may continue further based on requirement. So in the process of joining or matching the data, a key that is a column must be common. The process of joining makes the process simple for complex searches, maintaining a very simple, well-defined and easily developed set of tables. So coming to the relationships which are used for a relational database management system, any RDBMS can relate among the tables based on the relationships that are coming now. For example, one to one relationship. So one record from destination table is related to only one record from the source table. The second one is one to many relationship where one record from destination table is related to many records from source table. The third one is many to one relationship where many records from destination table is related to only one record of the source table. So if you see in this figure, here there are certain attributes are given where you have ID number, name of student, percentage of marks and rank. So if we are joining it relationally to the second table where you have name of subject, internal marks, external marks and total marks. So as you can see, the name of the student is common in both the tables which can be used for joining these two together. So here we have a common key that is a common column of name of student which can be used for joining the two tables. The next one is network database model. The network model was defined and invented by Charles Backman and was developed into a standard specification that was published in 1969 by the CODASYL consortium. More flexible database model to relate multiple linkages and a little upper hand over hierarchical model is present in this network database model because it allows rapid linkage among adjacent features. It defines its property by its name that is network which means it's a network that is many to many of linkage making query process. Thus, it makes it more user friendly. In another point of view, it represents itself as an upside down tree 
with branches as member information. In addition, the relationship that the information has in the network database model is defined as many to many relationship because one owner file can be linked to many member files and vice versa. So this database model supports the many parents theory where child can have many parents. It is taken as upgradation of hierarchical data model as the later one lacks many to many relationships. Network database model lacks simple database in terms of larger number of pointers. The large number of pointers use substantial storage space. The large number of pointers are needed in this network database model to manage by additional database models. So if you see in this figure where we have a data re relationship representation for a network database management system, we have this destination table. We have a destination table and we have a source table. In a one to one relationship, each row is related to the other one, while in many to one relationship, each row can be related to many rows in the destination table. Similarly, in a one to many relationship, for a one row in a destination table can be linked to many rows in the source table. So, the network database management system maintains an owner record which we call as parent record and a member record which we call as child record which is used as a one to one, one to many and many to many linkages. So this figure also gives us a diagrammatic representation of network database model where a store can have a one to many relationship with customer manager as well as the salesman. Also the customer manager and salesman they will have a many to one relationship with maybe the order or with the items. So the next one is hierarchical data model. This data model maintains the data in a tree like structure in a hierarchical way. That means it consists of records that are connected to each other through links. Each record represents a collection of fields that is the attributes each of which will have only one data value. Association between two records is called as link. This model grows with single root into many branches following the many children single parent logic. The data model is simple database like real world relationship like a book index. In this model data is structured into tree like structure with one to many relationships between two different types of data. So if we see this figure which represents the hierarchical data structure diagram, here the root can be linked to two levels that, and these two levels may be child and this is a one to two relationship and this level can further have one to many relationship with level two. So this data model is more common to environmental sciences as they offer simple an easier way to understand the models. So since this is a simple data model, it provides quick and convenient means of data access which is very easy for data retrieval. To have any information of query, one needs to go from root to the target. Further, there are some limitations also of this model since it follows a hierarchy. So, for the purpose of editing or addition of new records, at any level it has to be linked with root. It has a limitation to the branching network itself. Another limitation of this model is that the query for a near or a far feature data cannot be done easily. 
also this model has a series of pointers for accessing the data also the redundancy of data cannot be ruled out in case of the many to many relationships in a database model as you all know in a gis the dbms that is the database management system is a primary requirement to process any query analysis and updation so it is very important that the dbms should have a possibility of retrieving and backing up the data with the exponential growth of information and data the dbms have evolved from simple to more and more complex models while hierarchical data model provide simple and easy way to handle the queries and analysis the network and relational data model provides more complex analysis and queries so as we discussed earlier also this database management system can be inbuilt with the software or we can use it separately also for example if we talk about arcgis software here the database management system will have a geo database also in it which can be a personal geo database for storing maybe smaller files or a uh, file database which can be used for storing large number of databases that is large number of data further the arc catalog option in this arcgis software it uses uh, these geo databases for storing all the files which can be maybe a shape file a vector feature a raster feature or any other uh, overlay class option also it could be a class feature it could be a uh, field feature as well so accordingly this r catalog it stores and categorizes all these data files in a geo database which can be retrieved when we are doing an analysis one of the most important property of gis is that any map which we have prepared in gis it can be updated maybe after even 20 years 100 years or after even such a longer period so the these database management systems have the most crucial role in any gis system when we are performing any analysis because the operations that are done that also use data that is stored somewhere in the database management system and for any query retrieving or storing the data also this is important so to conclude at the end of this module we can we have learned the importance of database management system in gis as such the role of data especially the spatial data is very important in any uh, operations that we are doing in gis so the three data models that we discussed here the relational database model the network database model and the hierarchical database model these three have a very important role to play while performing any operation in gis in this module we have discussed how these models work what are the relationship what are the linkages primary key secondary key and also how can we can join the different tables in any database we have also seen the advantages and limitations of these database models in the gis i hope you all have learned something from this thank you